there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to take a look at watercolors and the different categories of watercolor because I get asked a lot, Lindsay, what should I get? I'm a beginner. I don't want to spend a ton of money. I'm not sure if I even I'm going to like it or my grandchild is getting into watercolor and I'd like to get them a gift. What should I buy? Uh, I get these questions a lot and there are so many options on the market today that it is a little mind numbing when you're trying to pick something. So I'm going to try to break it down a little bit so you can at least find the right category of paint for you and then um, you could go on from there to do a little more research either through reviews or um, see what's available in your area to pick the right watercolors for you. So generally watercolor is broken up into four different categories. The first category would be what you're used to and that would be the children's category of watercolor. And uh, Prang is my favorite brand of children's watercolors. The main objective of children's watercolors is to be non-toxic. So whether you're picking Crayola, Rose Art, um, Crazy Art, Prang, something at the dollar store, those children's watercolors, they pretty much look the same and they're designed to be non-toxic. Now there's also washable and standard. I recommend the standard unless you're really, really worried that they're gonna stain something important because the standard colors are going to behave more like watercolors. They're going to be transparent, they're gonna mix well, and they're gonna be more robust. And that's another reason I like the Prang because they are, um, extremely vibrant and the thing that I like you can either get the circles like the full pan circles or the half pan squares they are refillable so you could pop out these guys whoops and there I just dropped two and you can put new ones in there so you'll run out of the yellow probably before anything so you can replace those and that's I think they're the Maybe Crayola might sell the whole strip so you could replace, like if you're a teacher, but I just like the fact that you can replace those colors and um, and not have to rebuy the whole set, where you typically do have to rebuy the whole set. Not that they're expensive, but um, I, I think it's smart, especially if you've got several children and, you know, as they grow up through the ranks, you, there's no reason they can't use the same watercolor sets as they go. So the next level up would be your budget grade paints and your budget grade paints would be um, paints that come out at a lower price. They generally don't have pigment information or light fast information. They may be a store brand. They may be um, from a company that doesn't necessarily make only art supplies and may make a bunch of different things. One budget brand that is uh, pretty good, I think, um, was just one from Amazon. This is a Joy Art and 24 colors for like 15 bucks. Now you can spend $15 on a tiny tube of artist grade watercolors to compare. The nice thing about the budget grade paints, now again, you're going to have a huge variety in quality, but the, uh, the big benefit of the budget grade paints is that you get a lot and you can play and experiment and mix and you try a lot of techniques without worrying that you are wasting paint because that's a horrible feeling when you're trying to be creative that you're wasting your resources. So uh, the budget lines give you a large variety of colors. They usually give you a lot of, um, you know, that the tubes are pretty big. Like if you look at the size of this tube, versus the size of this artist grade tube, um, you know, you get a lot to work with. Generally, you have a lot more colors, so you don't have to do so much mixing, which is handy for beginners. Um, and if you just want to kind of fiddle around, see if you like it without spending a lot of money, that's a nice option. Now, any of these different lines of paints, is except for probably the children's grade, will give you the option of pans or tubes. Maybe not in the same brand, but you will be able to find pans and tubes. This is another budget brand. Um, this is the pretty excellent one I've talked about before because I just think it's such a steal. If you prefer pans, I definitely would go with this. It's 20 bucks and you get 36 colors. Um, but the reason I like it is that they're vibrant. So you can mix these colors and, you know, work with a limited palette and not end up with mud. So that is a downside to some of the budget colors is that if you um, mix colors, then they'll want to go a little muddy on you because a lot of the colors that come in these sets will be mixed already. Now, there's no pigment information on this for me to tell you that this rose is PV19 and that's all. I can't say that because that's not on the label. They could have um, extra white in there. They could have more extenders and things like that that we're just not aware of. 
So you might be asking, Lindsay, how come it's so much more expensive to buy that tiny little tube of Winsor Newton paint? Well, in the budget and the student and the children lines of paints, you're going to have more extenders. Now, with the children paints, they're generally using inexpensive food safe dyes. So it's kind of a different product. But when you get into the budget and the student grade paints, in order to make the paint affordable and to give you so much of it, they have to bulk it up a little bit. Um, so it's kind of like, say you are making soup and you you, you know, a couple friends decide the last minute to come over. You might add some more broth in that soup to stretch it, to make it go a little bit further. So that's kind of what they do with the budget and student grade paints. They add, lar they add more extenders, they add more fillers to bulk it up so that you can still keep painting, but, um, you know, you'll have, it'll, it'll, you'll it'll feel less wasteful. You'll be able to go a little bit further with it. It'll just last a little bit longer. So, um, if you end up squirting too much out and you end up washing it away, it's not the end of the world. Also, the pigments that are used in the budget grade paint could be from, um, they could be from food or cosmetic sources. They could be very fugitive, meaning they'll fade in the light. So it's not something you would really want to trust uh, hanging up in direct sunlight. I know this line does have uh, light fast information. I think I might even have the little... Yep, this does have light fast information. I saved a little bit on the box just so I would have that. If I ever did paint something with these and decided that I wanted to hang it up, I would have an idea about how long it would last. But I still would caution using the budget line paints on works of art to hang up just because um, a lot of them are, are not brands that have been around for a long time and may not have really accurate light fastness testing. They may go by the pigment um, rather than how the formulation actually performs because, you know, pigments are rated for a certain amount. But if you have a pigment and it's in an oil, linseed oil binder or an acrylic emulsion binder, that's going to be a little more protected and be a little bit less prone to fading. But they might use the same light fast testing for acrylics or oils on the watercolors and it wouldn't really be that accurate. So that's my only caveat. The only thing to keep in mind with these, because as far as giving you the, the joy of painting with watercolors, they will fit the bill. And But just know I would definitely look online for reviews just so that you get an idea of what budget brands are decent and what are junk, because some aren't very good. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention about budget tubes. Now, if you squirt it out on a plate using that as a palette and you have leftover, yes, you can re-wet them and keep using it till it's done. But sometimes if you use the budget paints and you fill like a, a palette, a watercolor palette up and you let it dry, because I prefer to work from the dry watercolor. I know many, many of us do. It's less wasteful. Sometimes with the budget brands, they will crumble and they will fall out of the palette and get all mixed up and then they're kind of useless. So if you're going to squirt out your budget watercolors into pans and let them dry, I recommend putting a couple drops of honey or glycerin in them so it kind of glues it all together because they often will skimp on the glycerin or the humectant in the budget lines. Even though they bulk it up with other fillers, they tend to skimp on that. I, and I think that's partly because some of the fillers they put in there are kind of like a chalky white and that um, you can see that sometimes when you paint, it's got a little bit of a chalky texture to it. That's also one of the fillers they put in. And that's also one of the reasons that I do recommend this pan set because if you look at it, um, there's no cracks. There's no cracks in the pans. So they obviously have plenty of gum arabic and of a, a humectant to keep it holding together. Same with the, you know, same with the kids ones. They're, they're in pans. They're going to stay together. So now we have talked about the children's and the budget line. Now we're going to talk about the student line. Now student watercolors can be about the same price as budget watercolors. They The difference that I put student watercolors versus budget watercolors in is student watercolors would be um, watercolors that have pigment information. They're generally from a tried and true brand that you've heard of before. And these paints are put out there to introduce you to paints with a lower priced option. So let's say you went to the art store and you've heard Winsor Newton is the best watercolor and you want to go and buy that tin of Winsor Newton watercolors. And then you get a gander at the price and you say, $200? I can't spend $200. I don't even know if I like this. And that's not even counting brushes and paper. So instead of just like freaking out and never trying it, they offer a student grade. Now, I want to mention, if you're a beginner, some of the nuances in the artist watercolor products are going to be lost because you're going to be busy mixing, learning how to do washes, learning techniques that you might not even notice some of the higher quality aspects or the differences between the two brands of paint. Um, I know there are so many teachers out there that will say, don't even bother with student grade, buy the best and start off with the best and that's all you need. 
and I can appreciate that advice because you could take a gorgeous sheet of, you know, $15 watercolor paper and you can slap on some beautiful $17 tube watercolor paints and it will look nice with even with no skill involved those colors those beautiful transparent colors on that gorgeous um thick expensive cotton watercolor paper will look beautiful don't get me wrong whereas if you did it on cheap paper with student watercolors it might be meh, you know nothing to write home about however uh Usually you're learning techniques and a lot of these techniques can be taught with student grade watercolors. That's what they're there for. So for less than the price of this uh, set of 24 half pans of Windsor Newton paints, you can see very, very well used and loved. You can get this set of 24 full pans of student paints. So this I've seen online for about $50. Um, and as I've used up, and now I've got this set probably 20 years ago, and as I used colors up, I just refilled them from the artist line. And that's the thing I like about student watercolors, uh, because they come out from your tried and true brands, such as Windsor & Newton, Schmincke, Dale Rowney, um, Rembrandt, or Royal Talons. They come out from these tried and true brands, they're going to be decent. Windsor Newton is going to not going to risk their reputation on junky paint. So by starting with a student grade set, you can see what colors you actually use and then buy that one tube. So if you ran out of permanent rose, you can buy a tube of permanent rose and refill it. Um, Windsor Newton so will sell, just, but the caveat since we're talking about Windsor Newton, they say don't refill your palette with tube paint, it won't work. It works just fine. They, they're the only company that says that. They encourage you to buy their pan paints, but I really notice no difference between their pans and their tubes. Um, but in, in any event, you can replace that pan if you want to stay with a pan, or you can refill it from the, the tubes. And I like that because let's say you've got this set of 24 colors, or maybe you got this set of 48 half pans or 45 half pans, because it's about the same price. Um, you just get smaller pans. And let's say you're using your paints and well, you never use sepia, for instance. Well, it wouldn't make sense for you to buy a whole set the head that color in it that you're never going to use. It makes more sense to start off with a student grade paint. Oh, ultramarine blue. I use that up in a month. I'm going to go buy a tube of ultramarine blue. Oh, I used up my sap green. I'm going to go buy a tube of that. So you're able to replace each color as needed as you use it up. So you're only spending the big bucks on paint that is ones you're actually going to use. And the ones that are maybe like cad red medium or, you know, there are certain colors that as you develop your style, you're going to prefer over others. So there's no point in buying colors you're not going to use, like white and black, you know, if you never use them, there's no point in buying a tube of that and spending your money on stuff that isn't going to be unused, and using student grade paints is a great way to determine that. And you're also going to find that the formulations in a brand of paint between their student and artist line are um, complementary. So if you are using Windsor Newton Cotman and you love their burnt sienna, and then you buy their burnt sienna in the artist grade, you're going to have the, a very similar tinting strength, you're going to have a very similar workability, they're going to use the same pigments. Um, like for Windsor Newton, for instance, I prefer their burnt umber over their burnt sienna because they use PR 101 for their burnt sienna and that's a little um, a little too warm for my liking but they kept it consistent and that's what I think is the benefit of the student grade paints over the budget paints just because you can seamlessly go into the artist grade and you can replace a tube whereas with the budget paints generally you're going to be buying um, a whole new set if you uh, use up a color or you'll have to go and and try to match it from another student line also your student grade paints are going to use your um, your expected names they're not going to use a name like um, vivid pink they're going to say permanent rose or opera they're going to use colors that are the um, kind of standard colored names whereas let's see we probably got some crazy colors oh, actually these colors are pretty good um, Actually, all these colors on here, they, they do use a pretty good, a pretty good, uh, a pretty good name. But you might get some, like, like, um, wild peach or something like that. That's like, what the heck color is this? You know, no artist color is called wild peach. You know, they don't use names like stardust and, um, imagine and, you know, kind of similar, you know, weird names like that, kind of like the craft watercolors use, which the craft watercolors kind of fall into the budget watercolor brands for the, for the most part from what my experience has been. Um, 
And that's mainly because there's no pigment information and there's no um, tried and true names. You kind of have to swatch it out and hold it up to other swatches. And it's it's great if you just want some really kind of fashion trendy colors for your cards and scrapbooks. And the quality is is usually pretty decent, but there, there definitely would be a learning curve to try to go from that to an artist quality paint if you didn't already know what those colors were called. So now that we've talked about the student, we've talked about everything except for the artist paint, we can talk about artist paints. So artist paints, um, the, the big thing you're going to notice is the price difference. So well, let's look at these three, these three tubes here. Um, I've got this uh, Budget uh, Premier by Nicole watercolor paint. Uh, there is no pigment information on this. Of course, I don't want my glasses on, so even if there was, I probably wouldn't be able to read it. <laughs> Um, so this goes on sale for about $2.50 a tube. I think it's regular price is about $2.99. This actually is very similar to the Cotman watercolors. So uh, E.C. Moore sells this. It's their their signature color, their signature line, the Premier line. Um, very much like Cotman. I would be surprised if it, I wouldn't be surprised to find out they're the same paint. Um, and then uh, so this would run you about $2.50 on sale. This would run you about. $3.99. This is a Cotman watercolors from Windsor Newton. And then this would run you probably a for a for a uh, five milliliter tube, probably run you around ten dollars. You pay less online, pay more in a store, but roughly about that. Um so you can see they kind of double. The price is almost double as you go up in as you go up in um in quality. So with the artist paints, you wouldn't want to have full set syndrome. You wouldn't want to have to have every color that they make like you might if, if it was like a budget or a craft watercolor because you can kind of experiment a little bit more. So a great rule of thumb is if there's a new color that you want to try but you're nervous about spending the money on it, see if there's a the color in their student range. Oftentimes watercolor companies do not have every color in their student range because the price of the pigments are more expensive. Uh, Cotman used to have real cobalts and cadmiums in their Cotman line, but uh, I think over the past 10 years or so they phased out the 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 cadmiums and the cobalts and there might be some other uh, paint color paint pigments they don't use in their common line anymore probably for a toxicity and a cost factor but um, but for the most part you'll be able to find a hue for most of these colors so that you can try it out on a less expensive paint and see how that color works with your painting style before investing in a you know twenty dollar tube of something that would be a little bit more expensive uh, so you know that's that's another way you can use a student line to uh, benefit you as an artist so the big benefits to the artist paint is that you're getting a lot more pigment pigment is the stuff that gives your paint the color. So a lot of people say, well, buying student paint is a false economy because you're paying for all that filler. Uh, yes and no, you are paying for filler. You're probably getting the exact same amount of pigment in these two tubes or, you know, for the same amount of, for the same amount of money. If, say, if this, say if this is half the size and this is half the price, you know, you're probably getting the same amount of pigment for the same price, but, um, but having, you know, only having to shell out, you know, three or four dollars for a tube of paint is more reachable for most people rather than having to decide do I want to spend fifteen dollars on one color you know it's and, and then be afraid to use it because you're afraid your skills aren't good enough so when you do get into the artist paint you're gonna realize that you don't need to use as much and when you squeeze it out into your palette it doesn't crack and crumble and fall out um, you're able to use every last drop and you are getting way more bang for your buck in the pigment so I would say that our, I would say the artist quality paint is the same value as a student grade paint. It's just you're kind of it's kind of like you're buying in bulk. You're getting so much more pigment. There are some techniques that are going to be so much better with the artist quality paint, such as techniques like glazing, because when they put the fillers in these lower priced paints, they keep the pigment from um, staining the paper and seep, uh, seeping in and when you go to paint over it often lifts up what's underneath that's why student grade paints are easier to lift which makes it kind of nice for beginners because if you make a mistake you can kind of go over it with water and blot it off uh, but it's not a uh, a quality you need as much as you further on in your journey because generally after years of practice you're not needing to clean up a mistake you want to keep layering on top so that's where graduating to artist colors can be so much more useful for you 
And nowadays we have this global economy and the prices are a lot less than they used to be. So you can get some really nice artist grade quality paints for what we used to pay for student grade. So, you know, that is one benefit. Something else that I've noticed lately uh, over the last, I would say probably five years or so, is the influx of really nice quality cheap budget paints that have been coming out like this pretty excellent I couldn't I but honestly to be I bought this because the tin was so cute um I had a gift card and I paid twenty dollars and I was shocked at how good the paint was um I couldn't believe that twenty dollar paint could look like that but what has happened is that a lot of the companies such as Windsor Newton and other kind of tried and true brands have outsourced their making of their student grade paints and so instead of making them in their home factories in England or France or wherever they're, or Germany where they're stationed, where their home base is, they'll send the recipes off to a factory in China or another Eastern, com Eastern country where the labor is cheaper and they'll ask them to make the paint. The paint will be the same, they'll use the same recipe, but then sometimes these companies turn around and then they sell that paint to other budget brands. So. I mean, when I tried the Premiere by Nicole Paint, I was like, wow, that seems, I can't say for sure, I don't work for either company or for factory in China, but it seemed just like my Windsor Newton Cotman. So I think because so many of our Western companies have um, outsourced their production to China, the Chinese have benefited from learning the uh, recipes for these particular paints and then have kind of undercut them with some of the budget options. So, I mean, and and knowing that, you can also decide, do you want to spend your money with a company? You know, who do you want to spend your money with? Where do you want to buy your products? Where do you want them produced? I mean, that's all stuff that you have control over. Um, with artist paints, just like with student paints, you'll have your information, your pigment numbers, your light fastness. You'll be able to tell when you buy a paint, is this paint going to fade or not? Not all artist paints are going to be light fast. If you buy Opera Rose from Windsor & Newton, it's going to fade just as well as Opera Rose from any other company because it's a fugitive color. So you just want to, uh, you want to still pay attention to that. Don't take the fact that you're using artist watercolors as a carte blanche license to paint, you know, paintings to hang in direct sunlight and sell and not worry about them fading. You need to still do your research and see what pigments are going to be tried and true and what ones are more for fun in your sketchbook because you know they're going to fade or fun for experimenting. So um, there are, and also even in the artist line, you're going to find multiple pigment colors. Uh, so by looking at your label, you could say, okay, this is PV19. I'm only guessing because I don't have my glasses on, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that's what permanent rose is. Um, so, you know, you can look at these labels, you could say, well, this is PV19, but this color over here is PV19 plus PW6. Well, maybe I'll just buy this and mix my white into it, you know? So you don't end up duplicate buying if it's the same pigment. Now, of course, how they grind the pigment, what they do to the pigment can change how it appears. Um, so you can't just go by the pigment numbers. You have to go by how they look and how they behave. But um, it does give you a good idea if you're looking at like some color that says like peacock green and you see that it's uh, PV, uh, it's a uh, PB15 and it's, you know, PG7. It's like, well, I have those two colors. I can just mix that myself. I don't need to buy that. That's where your knowing that information comes in handy with your artists and your student lines. So I hopefully have demystified a little bit of the variety of paint that's out there. Uh, what's right for you. Hopefully that can help you a little bit. And, um, I just want uh, I want you to buy supplies that you're not afraid to use. And I want you to use what you have. I know there's, I, I, I hear a lot. There's these, qu this is quest of getting more and more and more paint. <laughs> and I would be the pot calling the kettle black if I, you know, said not to do that because I do enjoy trying different paints. Um, I like reviewing them so that you guys can figure out what is going to be best for you. But um, I see it a lot with markers. I see it a lot with paints. Um, people thinking, well, if I just buy this set of paint, then my skills are going to grow and improve so much more. And I'm sure that comes with like buying cameras and buying musical instruments and buying everything. You think just if I just bought this next thing, then I would be so much better better. Um, honestly, buckling down with what you have, providing you have a decent quality product is going to be your best bet. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is that when you're using paints and papers, oftentimes your student grade paper 
is going to work well with your student grade paints. And also, if you can only upgrade one thing, upgrading your paper is going to be a bigger, make a bigger difference than upgrading your paints. So if you've got student grade paints and you're not happy with the way they're looking, upgrade your paper first and then try it because you may find that your paper was what was holding you back. I find that paper makes a much bigger difference than paints. Um, so that's just a little little side bit there. Oh, and also as far as brushes, I would recommend starting with good quality brushes because if you take care of them, they will last you years and years and years. So there's no point in buying them a million times, just waiting to be satisfied by something. And for brushes, I'm recommending the Creative Mark Mimics, the uh, the Faux Squirrel. They're a, um, they're an animal free product, but they do perform like an expensive... Actually, I think they perform better than a squirrel brush because they don't get waterlogged and tired. They stay, they stay snappy and absorbent and just delightful. So I will go out on a limb and say those are the brushes that I recommend right now for uh, for watercolor painting. They are a little on the pricey side as far as a synthetic brush, but um, but they're good. Budget option would be the Royal and Langnickel Menta brushes or Zen. So there you go. You got two. <laughs> you got a you got a high end and a medium in there. And uh, well, if you've stuck around this long, I thank you so much. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the video description. Um, I will. I don't know if I want to link up. I have a lot of reviews on my channel, so why don't you just check out reviews if you're curious about any in particular paint. Uh, there are a lot of really good ones out there right now. And uh, first, the best paint for you to use is what you already have. So use that first, see how far you could take it. If you feel like the quality just is really bad, then upgrade. But for the most part, practice is the big key with anything in the arts. So I hope you found this helpful. Please give me a thumbs up if you did. And until next time, happy crafting.